Hi, I'm Sophia, and today I'll be reading Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30, NASB version. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and, hu and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30 in the message version. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to make a real rest. Walk with me and work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace and I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Dear Jesus, I pray that Jody's preach will give us understanding and help us find out who we are meant to be, as well as learning how to give our worry to you. Amen. Amen. And thanks again, Sophia. I'm glad everyone got to see it. Um, and congratulations. And we celebrate with Lucy and Laura who got baptised. Um, and Father, we pray uh, that they would know uh, the, the joy of living life with you, of following you every day of their life. Uh, Father, we pray for um, great blessing over their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. I mean, so if there are someone who hasn't been baptised and that's something you think, do you know what, I want to say yes to Jesus, then swimming pools and bathtubs are available. Um, swimming pools, not in every home, but bathtubs, most homes. Um, so don't feel you've got to wait until we're on a big gathering again. If you want to get baptised, if that's something you feel God is stirring for you, then get in touch with us. Uh, we would love to help make that happen and to pray with you as you take that step and say yes to Jesus. And so, talking about saying yes to Jesus, this series is all about an invitation uh, from Jesus to live his way. And it's that invitation that Sophia read that said, come to me, come to me. If you're tired, if you're weary, if you're worn out, if you're burdened, heavy laden. And I don't know about you, but I go, yep, that's me. That's how I feel quite a lot of the time at the moment. I feel tired and worn out and heavy laden and burdened and weary. And I don't think I'm the only one. I think there's lots of us, lots of people feeling that way right now. And this year has a lot to answer for, doesn't it? It's disrupted everything. It's disrupted our plans, people's plans to get married. It's disrupted people's holiday plans. It's dis disrupted people's working uh, and the way they work and function. It's disrupted our friendships and our relationships, seeing family, traveling, uh, our finances. It's disrupted everything. And it's, there's an immense pressure around in lots of different ways and tension. There's a lot of pain and trauma around. I've heard it said that we're living in, in sort of PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. We're actually living in present traumatic stress disorder. We're going through this ongoing, prolonged trauma. And there's pain in that. And then there's the isolation as well. And it's like everything we knew, <laughs> all our foundations almost have crumbled. The, the systems and the structures that we, and the framework that we, that we put our life and built our life around has somehow crumbled this year. And it's exhausting. And we're looking at the global you know, the situation. We look at America and think it's crumbling. It's crumbling. You know, finances, the, you know, it's, it's crumbling. We've had so much happen this year that it's really hard not to feel tired and worn out and burdened. And then we hear these verses, these familiar verses, this invitation from Jesus. And he says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And then in the message version, which I've used both because I think there's real beauty in both of them, but it says, are you tired? Yes. Are you worn out? Yes. Burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me, and you'll recover your life. 
I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. You'll learn to live freely and lightly. And they're such familiar verses come to me. We know, we've seen them, they've been stitched on cushions for decades. Um, there's like wall art and people will throw it out. It's often in a banner and a, in a more traditional church. Come to me all who are weary. And we know the verses really well. We know it is an invitation from Jesus. And so lots of us say, yeah, I know. I, I've heard that invitation. But what we might not know is the context around that invitation. And it's a little bit startling. It's not quite as twee as just the invitation on its own. The invitation on its own is, is very, uh, very joy-bringing. Like, yes, Lord, I want to... Yes, I'm tired. But when we look at the context of that chapter and when Jesus said it, it's a little bit jarring. So I just want to take a moment to, to look at that. So in Matthew 11, which is where those verses came from, just eight verses before in Matthew 11:20, 20, Jesus starts talking uh, to some of the towns around, uh, some of the towns where he'd visited and he'd preached, where they'd seen miracles, uh, when they had, where they'd known the teaching of Jesus and the presence of God. And he starts talking to those towns. And he basically denounces, I mean, woe to you. You think you've, you know it, you think you've got it right because you've, you've, seen, you've heard the teaching and you've seen miracles and you've been in the presence of God, but, but you haven't turned. He says, you haven't repented from your sin. You haven't turned and followed my way. And it's really jarring. These towns who thought they had it together, who thought they had their, their faith worked out, they thought they knew what they were doing. And Jesus goes, whoa, 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 whoa. That's the other version of woe. Woe to you, whoa, whoa, whoa. He says, whoa. But you haven't turned to me and followed my way and the way that I'm offering. But the beautiful thing about God is that in that moment, God never offers or, or brings judgment and doesn't offer mercy or an invitation in response to that. And so this invitation to come to him, <clears throat> to follow his way, is in a response to, to saying to those towns, you think you've got it right but you haven't actually turned to me and followed my way. They were missing something. They were missing something. And so he, off, he prays after he's, after he's told them, you know, guys, be warned. You've got to turn to me. He then prays to the Father, and then he offers the invitation to come to him. And when he offers this invitation of coming to him, he talks about this yoke. Now, we saw it in the family time. Thank you, Lani. Um, the, the yoke was a farming tool. So for those of us who grew up in the city or suburbia, um, we don't know what this is. We haven't seen it. We don't use it. A bit clueless. But it's this, it's this farming tool. We've got a picture to show you here. And it's a farming tool that goes across kind of the two oxen and, and helps them carry a load together. And can you see that it kind of goes across the two? And one, one of those uh, guys is a bit bigger than the other. And so he's taking a bit more of the weight, most likely. And they're carrying it together. And it's, it's this yoke that's come um, to carry the burden, carry their load together, to work together, to move together, to, to go about their day together. And so they use the, he uses this word of yoke. But also, yoke back then was referred to the rabbi's teaching. So rabbis had yokes, and I'm not talking about the yellow thing in the middle of your egg, okay? Leave that one aside, that's got nothing to do with this morning. But this is the, the teaching, the yoke of the rabbis. And so there were loads of rabbis, and they would each have their own yoke, their own teaching, their own instruction, their own interpretation of scripture, their own way of living, and their own kind of interpretation of the laws of that. And so uh, young boys in that culture, the, the Jewish boys, would grow up under the teaching of a, of a rabbi. They would grow up under his interpretation of the law and of the scriptures. And they would learn to live their lives that way. They would live out the way, the yoke of the rabbi. Now, Jesus was often called rabbi, often called teacher. And um, he, he says, he's, this is incredible, because living under the, the yoke of a, of a traditional rabbi was quite weighty, 
There's a lot of laws. There's a lot of do's and don'ts. There's a lot of clean and unclean. There was a lot going on that you had to kind of follow and understand. You had to know your scriptures off by heart. There's so much. Um, and you learn it from kind of a young age and went all the way through to adulthood, following this rabbi's teaching. And Jesus says, you call me rabbi, you call me teacher, but my yoke, my teaching, my instruction, my way of living isn't a burden. It's easy and it's light. And in the version of the message, you can live freely and lightly. His interpretation of scripture, he isn't weighty, it's actually freeing. And it reminds me of John 10.10 10, when Jesus said, I came to give life and life to the full. Jesus doesn't come to dump a load of burdens on us and you've got to do it this way and you've got to do it that way. He says, I'll carry the load with you. I'm the bigger one in this relationship. I'll carry the load with you so you can work with me and walk with me and do life with me that's free and easy for you. And I think that's where this series has really captured my heart and captured my attention, particularly this year. Because if I'm honest, that hasn't always been my experience. It hasn't always been my experience that living life with Jesus has been free and light and easy. And maybe that's just me, but I don't think it is particularly this year. I think particularly this year, a lot of us are, are bowing down under the weight of emotional burden. And as you get older, you naturally um, get more emotional burden and, and weight of responsibility on, on you in life. And this year seems to have done that. When everything else, our, our stability has gone and kind of everything's in chaos and out of control. And we, all the plans we had have gone. The framework we did life with has gone and we're weighed down. And I feel like I'm missing something. Because I can't hand on heart say that I'm living freely and lightly all the time, every day. Especially when I face pain. Especially when I face conflict. Especially when I face grieving. Especially when I, I face all the things I've got to do in life and the weight of responsibility. And yet Jesus says, come to me and I will give you rest from those things. I will carry the burden with you if you're yoked to me, if you'll follow my teaching and my way, then I will show you a life that is light and free. Now what he doesn't say, and I want to be really clear on this, is I'll show you how to put on a brave face. So that in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the grief, in the midst of the fear, in the midst of the turmoil and the conflict, they're like, it's okay, I'm doing life with Jesus. It's all right. Because that's just grit and a brave face and actually is lying. It's not okay. Life is not okay right now for a lot of us. So it's, Jesus isn't saying put on a brave face and just, you know, summon up the joy of the Lord. He's not saying that. He's also not saying minimise the grief and the pain and the pressure and the turmoil and the hurt and the disappointment in your life. He's saying, I'll carry it with you. And if you bring it to me and listen to my teaching and, and follow my teaching, follow the way, turn to me, then you can journey through those things in a way that is free and light that doesn't weigh you down. We still have to face those things. We still have to journey through life and all that it brings, but we do it with Jesus. And I don't know about you, but that's an invitation I want to say yes to. A fresh and a new today. I want to say yes, I want to live the Jesus way. I want to live a life that in the midst of these issues that we're going to be looking at over the next six more weeks of this series, we're going to be looking at how do we face grief? How do we face pain? How do we uh, face fear and all those and conflict in the midst of this context of this life? But do it in a way that doesn't weigh us down, but in a way that we can live freely and lightly because we're living it the Jesus way. And I think this year is a bit of a wake-up call for us. 
I think it's incredible that the framework we've built, and I know we did the series reframe, but the framework we built and our belief system is kind of crumbling a bit. The things we, the ways we interpreted and the ways we, we did life. And I think some of us have, have maybe tried to add Jesus into our life rather than make him the way. There's John Mark Comer, um, who's a, a guy in Portland, Oregon, and he does a lot of teaching around uh, this way to live lightly and the yoke of, of Jesus being light and easy. And I'm just going to read uh, two paragraphs from him. He says, the imagery of an easy yoke is a bit odd. Agreed. Far removed from an agrarian economy, we forget that a yoke is a tool for work. It was used to harness oxen together to plough a field. And that sounds like the last thing a burned out worker needs. The tired among us don't want a yoke. We want a vacation. We want a holiday. But Jesus is wise beyond comprehension. He gets, better than we do, that life is an unending series of burdens. There's no way around the weight of responsibility that is, this, that is life this side of the resurrection. What we need isn't an escape from that weight, but a way to carry it with ease and joy. That's what Jesus offers. A way to carry the weight of life with a straight back and a smile on your face. Wouldn't it be great if we were able to, to journey through the rest of 2020, facing the things we face with the pressures and the responsibilities and the issues, not bowed down by it, feeling burdened and, and worn out and tired and heavy laden, but with a straight back and a smile on our face because we're yoked with Jesus. We're following his teaching on how to walk through grief. We're following his teaching on how to walk through pain. We're following his teaching on how to walk through the issues we face. And that's the invitation this morning. That's what this series is about. This is just an intro to say, why don't you journey with me? Journey with us over these coming weeks so that we might live freely and lightly. That we might know the truth of what it is to live the way of Jesus. You know, it's not about the destination. We hear this a lot. It's not about the destination. We know where we're going. We know the destination. If we said yes to Jesus, we know what our destination is. But it's about the journey of getting there. I don't want to turn up to heaven worn out. I want to turn up to heaven free and light. But that hasn't necessarily been working. Something's been missing. And it reminds me of somebody else in the Bible um, who comes to Jesus, and that's Nicodemus. I just want to read a few verses um, of when Nicodemus comes to Jesus. It says, now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And Jesus answers and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And so we have Nicodemus who comes after dark. He doesn't go in daylight. And I wonder if that's because he was a little bit embarrassed. Here he was, a Pharisee, a teacher of the law. And he knew his stuff, he had his system, he had his plans, he had his framework. And yet as he saw Jesus teaching and Jesus' disciples, Jesus' followers, those who had said yes to following the Jesus way, it's like he's saying, I feel like I'm missing something. The teaching I'm doing is, is weighing me down, but you're offering something different. And so he comes to him in dark, maybe because he's embarrassed. And in some ways, I'm a little bit embarrassed. Standing up here and honestly saying, you know, I've been teaching, preaching for 20 years. And I come saying, I'm not sure right now. I can say I'm living freely and lightly. I'm missing something. And I want to journey back through Jesus' teaching over these weeks that I might 
walk with him and do life with him and face the issues I face freely and lightly. And I think it's a case of not going to him first sometimes. I think sometimes I, I go to other people's opinions or I go to research or go to the news or go to my own thoughts. Or, and so we tend to, we read a lot of books, a lot of us, and we tend to say, oh, so-and-so said this, so-and-so said this. How often in our conversations do we quote Jesus? Do we know his teaching? Do we live by it rather than saying John Mark Comer? or someone else who we've been reading at the moment. And yes, those people have wisdom, but I don't want to live by their wisdom. I want to live by Jesus' wisdom, his teaching, be yoked to him, follow his instructions, so that I can journey the Jesus way through life. All the different terrains that that offers. And Jesus says to Nicodemus, you need to be born again. And that's a really common image that we're, we're aware of and we know. And lots of us have been born again. We said yes to Jesus. We said, yes, I, I ask for forgiveness for my past. I want to say yes to what Jesus has done on the cross for me to bring me peace in my present and hope for my future. Lots of us have said that. We've been born again in the spirit. And we even have people baptized to say, yes, I've been born again. That, that imagery of going down in the water and coming back up afresh and anew like Lucy and Laura this morning. And it's interesting because when we jump back to Matthew 11, just before Jesus offers this invitation, after he's said woe to the towns who thought they knew him, he prays to the Father and he says about us being childlike, that it will be revealed to those of us who are childlike. And I've had this image over the last few weeks of been preparing for this, that, of this little kind of baby. <laughs> and I tried to find a decent video for it, but I just wanted you to imagine, just close your eyes for a second, imagine a, a baby learning to walk. You know, that, that stumbling, that stumbling kind of rocking, oh, are they going to go, are they going to fall, are they going to fall? And just imagine the baby's father, the dad is there. And he's like, come on, come on, take a step, take a step. You can do it. And the joy on the father's face as the baby takes that first step and then promptly falls down. And I feel like this morning, God's saying to some of us, take a baby step in my way. Like it's you're born again, come to me childlike. Not with your knowledge, not with your theological framework, not with your know-how, not with all your plans. But come to me like a child and take a baby step on your journey with me. It's not about the destination. It's about the journey. It's about the Jesus way. And you know what? As we're kind of wobbling, and going, I don't know what this looks like. The Father is saying, come. Just walk, take the step, take the step, take the step. Because it's interesting when Jesus, Rabbi Jesus, teacher Jesus, called his disciples, when you think about it, they were the men who were rejected by all the other rabbis. They weren't selected. They weren't good enough to follow the other rabbis' teaching, their yoke, their instruction, their, their ways of living. They go, go back to the village and be fishermen. You're no good. You're not good enough to be one of my disciples. And yet Jesus goes to those very people and says, come follow me instead. Come be yoked with me. Life will be free and easy. Come follow me. And so this morning, if you feel weary, if you feel burdened, tired, heavy laden, if you feel like you might be missing something. This isn't living life right now in these crazy times. It doesn't really match up to the invitation Jesus is offering. I want to ask you, will you journey with me? Will you journey with us as Restore over these coming weeks? 
to walk in the way of Jesus again, afresh and anew, to, to push off the burdens that are weighing us down and lean into the teaching of Jesus to see how I live this way that is freely and lightly. I'm just going to read those verses again from both versions. Just listen to the invitation. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. If you know Jesus is inviting you into that this morning, I'm going to ask you really simply to, to maybe hold out your hands to receive the invitation. Maybe you want to kneel down where you are Maybe there's a need to turn to him to repent and say sorry for, for not following his way. I'm going to lead us in a moment of prayer and Vickers is going to come up and, and play and then we're going to go into a time of worship together. I'm going to kneel down just in this moment and if you want to join me, you're welcome to, to do that. Father, thank you for your invitation to come to you, even in our tiredness and our weariness. Lord, we know that's not what you've called us into, that you invite us into to something freer, something lighter, something easier, in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the grief, in the midst of the chaos that there is a Jesus way to live. And Father, I want to say sorry. I want to repent like those towns needed to. I want to turn from not following you, not coming to you first. And I want to turn to you and your ways, your teachings, your life. Lord, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you that we can always come to you. Thank you that you extend compassion and love time and time again. And Father, I pray that we as a church may be known as a people who face conflict, who face pain, who face grief the Jesus way. Lord, that we might know the truth. We might know the way. And we might know the life that you offer afresh and anew in this season. In Jesus' name.